Grant Robertson back with us. Morning, Grant. Good morning again, Mike. Uh, by the time you take your $12 billion for infrastructure, your 12.1 for your first announcement, the extension to the nine, the bank guarantee, the business expansion, what are you in for so far on the overdraft? Um, if you take up all of those things there, you're talking around the $30 billion mark going back to that $12 billion infrastructure package. Um, and, you know, when we look around the world, that's pretty comparable to the level of investment relative to GDP that countries are putting in. Uh, but obviously, as this evolves, we've just got to keep moving with it. Um, as I've said quite a few times in our conversations, Mike, we enter this in a situation where our level of net debt was was very low compared to the rest of the world. So we've got that fiscal headroom. I'm keeping an eye on it. We've actually got to make sure that we, we think about the other end. But right now, my priority is making sure that New Zealanders have got income, shelter, our health system is funded properly, and we'll take things day by day after that. The mortgage business yesterday, how many mortgages do you think you'll deal with? How exposed are they? What size are they? And do we have any clue as to the answer to any of those questions? I think a whole lot of those quiz you're going to be putting to Steve Yukovich from Kiwi Bank, and I think that would be a really good to ask him. Look, at this stage, very hard to tell. We certainly know that the criteria that we've put in place or the banks have put in place around that is around you know being affected by COVID-19, and clearly very, very many mortgage holders will have been and will be. What this does, is, as you'll know, is really just defer the payments, Mike. It's about making sure that at this time people don't have to make them, but they'll end up being added onto the mortgage at the end. It's principal and interest, so that also will you know, mean a significant bill as well. But I'm very pleased the banks have stepped up for this, taken that pressure off homeowners who are worried about losing their homes. They know that for the next few months that's not an issue. The 80-20 split, did you fight for that? Look, that was actually something that came out of our negotiations and it was based on the fact that we want to make sure that for the for the lending scheme that we're doing, that the money gets out the door. And, you know, banks are still businesses. They're still going to be making assessments on levels of risk of customers. We wanted to make sure they had confidence to lend to the businesses that are viable but have just been hit by COVID-19. So 80-20 means the banks know the government's balance sheet's behind them. We can get that money out to the businesses so that they can keep employing their staff. The reason I asked the 80-20 split is did it start at 50-50 and you had to move to 80 to make it happen and therefore you're taking so much risk it could potentially financially blow up in your face? Yeah, like there is a limit to the scheme. That's the $6 billion limit. So, you know, that gives us the ability to say that's the, the other limit of the scheme. But no, it was a it was an iterative discussion, Mike. It wasn't like our arms were twisted or anything. It was actually just this is the level we determined would ensure that money got to New Zealanders to keep their businesses going and to keep people employed. Stories we're starting to see in the last 24 hours. Rugby want money, warriors want money, horse racing wants money. They're covered in the whatever you call it, the charities or that. They're nothing special. Am I right in saying that? Well, in terms of the wage subsidy, yes, that's correct. They, they're covered within their role as employers. I think what those organisations are doing, Mike, are looking towards what does recovery look like. And as I think I said, you know, I feel like it was probably only a few days ago, really. You know, we're looking at each sector, sport, arts, and so on, and saying, you know, let's hunker down New Zealand, let's get through this next month. And then let's start thinking what recovery and rebuilding looks like. So we'll, we'll have those conversations. But for now, you're absolutely right. Those organisations are, are just the same as anybody else. The public service, when do they get looked at, given that you pay for it and your tax bill's going down? And presumably something's got to give eventually, doesn't it? Well, again, these are things that are far in the future, not far in the future, but certainly some distance in the future from now. What I do know is that the public service are working 24-7 on making sure that you know we have all the things prepared and we're ready and the services that we need from from health to through to you know digital education and all sorts of other things that are going to be needed in the next while of years. So you know we'll come to think about those things as we move through this and get to the budget and beyond.